Good morning, Veritas. Today is Monday, May 11th, 2020. I hope everybody enjoyed their Mother's Day yesterday. Um, let's get jump. To, let's jump right into today's assignment. Sorry that I already had begun. I almost finished this assignment, but my camera ran out of memory. So I'm going to try to work a little faster, and hopefully we can get through it this time. Okay. So number one, you can see I, I already answered here, but let's let's go through it together. It says which of the following correctly represents 52.06. So that's 52 and six hundredths. And we need to choose two. So I wrote over here, choose two, to remind myself that even if I get excited when I find one, I have to make sure I choose two of them. So it's 52 and six hundredths. So A is incorrect, 52 and six tenths, because the zero is in the tenths place. So there are not six tenths, there are zero tenths. And there are six hundredths. So A is not correct. B is 5 times 10 is 50, 2 times 10 is 20, it's not 2 times 1, it's 2 times 10, which makes 20, and then 6 times 1, 100 hundredth is 6 hundredths, which 50 plus 20 is 70, plus 0 0.06 is 70.06, so that is not equal to 52.06, so B is also incorrect. Then it says choose 2, but I'm still going to make sure that C and D are both right. So 5 times 10 is 50 plus two times one is two, plus six times one one hundredth is six hundredths, 50 plus two is 52, plus six hundredths is 52.06. So that one is correct, C is the correct option. And then the last one, D, 52 and six hundredths, 52 and six is in the hundredths place, so that is also correct. So the answer for one, the answer is we chose two, are C and D. Okay, now let's go to number two. It says to find the quotient. The quotient is the answer to a division problem. So we are going to be dividing 5,428 divided by 3. The quotient of 5,428 and 3. Write your answer as a mixed number. Okay, so you see I have the answer there already because I solved it. But it's really important that you follow through these steps so that you know how to solve it on your own. Okay, so we're making three equal groups. That's our divisor. So we're going to split 5,428 into three equal groups, but these groups must be equal. Okay, so if we have 5,000, you can only put 1,000 into each group because you would need 6,000 in order to put 2,000, 4,000, 6,000. So you can only put 1,000 into these three groups. Okay, so we put a 1 here in the thousands place because you can only put 1,000. 1 times 3 is 3,000, so when you subtract 5 minus 3, we still have 2,000 left, right? Because we had 5,000 and we used 3 of them, so there's still 2,000 left. So now we're going to look at that. We're going to bring down the hundreds and we're going to look at it as 24 hundreds. Okay, so if we had 24 hundreds and we had 3 groups, we could put 800 into each group. Okay, because 8 times 3 gets you to 24 hundreds. So then we used all the hundreds. We used all the thousands now, and we used all the hundreds. So now we're going to bring down the tens. So if we had two tens, you can't put one into each group, because then they wouldn't be equal groups. So we can't put any of those tens yet into those three groups. So we subtract. We still have two tens left because we didn't use them. Now we're bringing down the eight ones. We have 28 ones. If we're going to split those into three groups, we can put nine into each group. And that's 27. So we still have one left over. Okay, so now our remainder is going to become the numerator of our fraction. And the divisor, the number we divided by, is going to become the denominator. So the best answer here, the answer to this problem is 1,809 and one third. Because now, like, look, we have 1 as a remainder. So if we're going to take this remainder, which is 1, and we're going to split it into these three groups evenly, we're going to put 1 third into each group. So this group will get 1 third, this part. This group will get 1 third, this part here. And this group will also get 1 third. And now that remainder has been used. Now it's gone. We included it into these as a fraction. So the answer for number two is 1,809 and one-third. Okay, good job. Give yourself some snaps if you got that right. Great work. Okay, so now I already started this one, but 
We have been doing a lot of order of operations. We're gonna do the parentheses first, then the exponents, then multiplication and division, whichever one comes first from left to right, then we do addition and subtraction last, okay? And the reason we do it in this order is because the parentheses is gonna have the biggest amount of change in our problem. Then the exponents are gonna have the second biggest amount of change, then multiplication and division, and last, the smallest amount of change will be addition and subtraction, so we're gonna do those last, right? This is repeated the addition and subtraction. Multiplication is repeated addition, division is repeated subtraction. So we're gonna have repeated subtraction is gonna have more of an impact on our final problem than just regular addition and subtraction. So we're gonna do the multiplication and division before we do the addition and subtraction. Okay, so we're not gonna do the subtraction yet. I just wrote 1,000 minus, we're gonna do these exponents. 10 to the second power is really 10 times 10. It's 10 times itself twice, it's not 10 times two. So 10 times 10 is 100. Then I just rewrote the rest. Times five minus 18 plus, and let's do this exponent. Three to the third power is three times three, which is nine times three again is 27. You do three times itself three times. Three times three times three, which is three times three is nine times three is 27. Then I just rewrote the rest plus three times four. Now we're gonna finish these parentheses. So I'm still gonna write 1000 minus Let's do the, mul we have to do the multiplication before we do the subtraction. So in here is 100 times five, that's 500 minus 18. We'll figure that out after. Plus, let's see, we're not gonna do 27 plus three yet. We have to do the multiplication first. So 27 plus, we gotta do three times four is 12. So now we're getting to the point where we're almost at just addition and subtraction, we are. So this is still gonna be 1,000 minus, 500 minus 18 would be 482, plus 27 plus 12 is gonna be 39. So now we have 1,000 minus 482. So can't do zero minus two, so you borrow across these zeros until you get to a whole number. And the zeros we went across, we have to turn into nine, and the original one becomes 10. Let me know if you need help with this. I'm just afraid of running out of time on my camera, but we've done quite a bit of this. The original one we couldn't do, that becomes 10. The other ones we had to go across become nines until you get to a number that's not a zero. You take one away from that. 10 minus two is eight. Nine minus eight is one. Nine minus four is five. So this is 518, and then we have to do plus 39, and that'll be our final answer. 518 plus 39, and we get an answer of 557. And that was a tough order of operations problem, but 557 is the answer to that problem. Give yourself some snaps, that was a tough problem today. Okay, order of operations. I want to see how you guys do with those. Let me know if you're still a little bit confused, um, but th that was pretty complicated. So nice work. All right. Great job. Hope you have a great Monday. See you later.